All right, guys, welcome back. Today we're going to do Brass, issue number one uh, by Image Comics. This is a free issue miniseries, and I just discovered a moment ago that this also have a volume two with, I believe, six issues, which I didn't know. So this comic is from 1996. The, the follow-up is from 2017, so I'm a little bit hesitant about that. So I looked up some art. Art looks fantastic. By the way, this is a wraparound cover. Uh, all three issues have that. I got all three issues. So, what is this? Well, I'm, I'm gonna, I, I gotta show you. Uh, so yeah, um, the beginning is that this guy is transforming into something else. And um, it explains that his name is Herschel Goldstein and he is uh, transforming into this machine and you see all these things that happening to him. And it seems that, um, it's a very, very, very painful process. He says, imagine cleaning out your arteries with a piano wire. That would hurt, right? Um, so he says that's really painful. And then his form... Uh, look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this. It looks like this. So um, he said he didn't ask for this. Um, and he also said, yeah, I know it looks like that it looks like something from a Japanese sitcom or something or an anime. And, um, and he says, two months ago I was a janitor. Um, at that time I thought that was the worst job in the world. Now I really wish I was cleaning toilets again. Now, I want you to notice how, what the, um, the amount of detail that has been put in this page. I always say to you guys, you know, if you do a, a Splash page or a double spread splash. It should wow you. For me, definitely this is wow. And this is, you know, just the tip of the iceberg what I'm going to show you. Um, so we have a, more like a flashback so that he is a janitor in a, some kind of a club in New York. A disco or whatever. And uh, he says, I work days at a trendy New York nightclub cleaning all sorts of substances that may or may not at one time have been excreted from human bodies. It's funny, the things you miss. Um, I'm not saying I miss his job as much as having some place to go where I was expected every day. And uh, so he's just cleaning shit and he says, well, uh, I uh, do my work. I go home and eat and watch TV. What else does a person really need? But then this is happening. So he's hurting and then he's cleaning it in and then it's somehow his stomach or his sides hurt. And um, yeah. Yeah. He doesn't know what to do. So and then, um, uh, and then he hears a voice. Excuse me, did I give you the permission to take a break? Uh, and it was obviously a joke because uh, this girl here is um, his friend. It's, it's Juliet. It's, it's his boss. And um, he says, I met Juliet when I was sleeping in the stairwell of her building. She let me stay in her place for a while. And since then, I've been a kind of a pet charity pet charity project for her. And she says, hey, um, you look tired. Uh, maybe you should go to a doctor, etc." cetera. And, um, and he says, hey, you've been complaining about the, your, your stomach forever. And uh, so he says, um, maybe I'm just hypochondriac. I do not know what it is, nor do I want to look it up. And, but she suggests, hey, um, yeah, it could be everything, but just please just see a doctor. And he says, okay, thanks, Julia. I'll see you later. But I want you to point out how much detail there is. Look at, I mean, even the shoes here. You know, and then go up to this. All these tiny details. It's fantastic. Um, so he says that he's been to the doctor uh, a couple of weeks ago, took blood tests, etc. And um, so this guy says, to Tumor, cancerous, weeks to live at best. Surprise, you're st still standing. But uh, Herzl says, well, I, I feel fine. What, what are you talking about? And then this guy says, you have cancer. You are going to die. And uh, then he leaves. And then we see this traffic jam that's really packed. Jesus Christ. So he's sitting there minding his own business. And then some guy talking weird shit. Well, you can read it if you want. But it seems that he is... Um, talking to this woman here with a child, and he says, uh, 
I really love kids and uh, etc. So Herschel complains that he is now broken because of the money that goes to the medical bills and he can, well, he's an avid smoker. So he thinks that he maybe got cancer from smoking and well, he doesn't have money for smokes again. So then this happens, this, this guy goes way too far and uh, he does, you know, talking stuff to her and weird stuff. And she says, uh, hey, maybe I could go to your house and, you know, we can play with your kids, etc. He's a filthy piece of shit. And uh, I bet she likes Power Girls. And then he's just doing this weird thing. So the, the driver says, hey, what do we got here? I'm going to ask you to exit the bus on. And then uh, he's talking back with something weird with the guy and he pulls his gun and <laughs> look at this. He uh, has become really aggressive. And everybody says, oh, he's going to shoot him. Get the gun, get the gun. And then um, and then, so the, the, the pedo guy shoots him. And, and Herschel is here, you know, not moving anything. What a crybaby. Life's a bitch all over. You don't hear me whining about him. Well, he's got blood all over his face. Um, so, yeah, he's probably all, what's the word, apathetic about the whole situation now. Maybe he doesn't really get what, you know, that's going to die in a couple of weeks. Or maybe he does and, you know, it doesn't affect him or something. So this guy is going on a rampage, shooting at the windows, shoots that guy again and <laughs> blasted through the uh, through the front window. It's called the police. And this guy says, oh, yo, check it out, man. He's making a movie. Well, not really. <laughs> and then this guy is going away and um, uh, this guy's crazy. He says, I got to want the Power Rangers. And then everybody's just, you know, walking out of the bus like nothing happened and like it's the normal thing to do and then all these guys hey man that was smooth i bet i bet they're making a jackie chan movie <laughs> oh man this this world is wild so he comes home and uh you know i'll radio chatter about what happened and then he got some um, t missed telephone calls but he must return some videotapes and cost him 155 150 bucks even juliet calls him to know wants to know hey how i went in there with the doctor and then um well, he just ignores it. He just pets his cat. And uh, and he says, ah, I'm, I'm tired. I'm going to sit here for a minute. And uh, But then uh, somebody knocks on the door. And uh, I love this view. It's the police. And the police um, found him because this, he was the only one he did, that didn't give a statement. Hey, hey, uh, police, Mr. Goldstein. Yeah, sir, we understand you witnessed a shooting today. We need to ask a few questions. Uh, he says, shoot, no pun intended. Can you confirm that the gunman had long hair and trench coat? Do you remember distinguished marks such as scars, etc.? Hey, what's that on your shirt? Oh, it's blood, I guess. <laughs> I got splattered a bit, a little. <laughs> she, she looks at the co-police guy. And uh, do you own a trench coat? Maybe we can uh, come in and have a look. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so he, uh, I just unlocked the door here. But then he... Does this so he, you know, takes his trench coat and then jumps out of the window. Not sure why. I mean, he's he's innocent, but yeah, he has a trench coat. He has long hair and his blood all over him. So yeah, I get it, <laughs> but still. And um, and then we go a little bit back in time, and oh, it's so freaking amazing. So this is a laboratory underground in 1967. And um, so this guy, uh, there's a couple of science guys here that talk about um, a subject called Musca domestica. It's a fly. And they inject it with some kind of a virus. And again, look at this. How, how oh man. And yeah, it's a lot of science talk here. So they are injecting him, but it's, you know, and then this fly is transforming into... Look, look at this, guys. Holy moly. This, oh, man. This looks like a transformer. This is great. But then uh, some weirds is happening. So you can see this console is, uh, is not happy with that because it uh, the fly gives a reaction of and things start to explode. And the scientists didn't see that coming. And uh, so this guy is, uh, I don't know, disintegrating because of the explosion. could get out in, in time and then... Uh, so this is part of the laboratory. You see bodies flying everywhere. Uh, yeah, total destruction. But one of the science guys got out. 
And he says, incredible. And one of the soldiers says, what's wrong with you, Rosenblum? The whole section of the lab is destroyed. It'll turn out to be a worse chemical disaster since, since ever. I know, we haven't even tried it on a human yet. So, yeah, so it seems that the virus is giving off a reaction that is volatile, I guess. Um, so we hear with the police here and the police get, uh, you know, notification that uh, Herschel is, uh, well, they don't know it's Herschel, but there's a guy in the vicinity that looks like the killer. <laughs> Look at this face of this cop. And I, uh, so we, they see him running. That him could be. Hold it, boy. That's him. How do you know? He's running, ain't he? Well, he's not wrong. And uh, I'm buying breakfast for, for whoever gets him. So the police force is going after him. Well, Hirsch is trying to escape, and this woman says, what do I get if I shoot him? You get me. Maybe I skipped the breakfast. <laughs> uh, it's just, I know it's silly, but it's just, it's just I didn't see that coming at all. That he says, it's you get me. Normal, normally, it's the, way, the other way around. Anyway, so he's making a jump for it and going to the, um, well, the metro station, is, uh, probably, or train station, I'm not really sure. But then the police says, hey, I'm not going down there, no matter what you do. And then we go jump back in time as well. Now, if I'm, I can, I can be uh, wrong, but I read between the lines that this is, I guess, Miles Craven. Now, Miles Craven is a um, Wildstorm villain. I believe he's the director of I.O., there's a whole story about that, uh, but he's a he's a he's a big shot and uh, probably the the main bad guy in this comic. I'm guessing. Looks like a James Bond villain. So he gets a report about what happened, about the explosions, and that you know a couple of scientists are dead. And uh, so uh, uh, so Mr. Craven, how is the fly? He says they haven't recovered the fly yet. Um, so, but basically he says, well, um, you know, what I told you before about the, the reaction with the fly and the virus, uh, we shouldn't have a problem if we tested on humans. And then um, Miles is happy and he says, who do you have in mind? Uh, so we don't see this. Oh, God, this is so good. So incredibly good. So there's some kind of, I don't know, science lab or whatever. And, uh, well, it says, we have four political refugees, sir. They wouldn't be missed. Super refugees. I like that. Oh, God, look at this, man. The, 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 the amount of detail and, and texture and lighting. It's freaking awesome. Um, so, yeah, these guys are getting uh, injected with the virus. And, uh, yeah, these guys are going to have it. They're going to, they're going to transform. And, uh, yeah, there's a, a little bit of an explosive here, but not that the whole facility is being blown up. And uh, so the last thing we, we see is that they are being transformed into this awesome, freaking awesome, I don't know, super villains, Robotech monsters. <laughs> It's, I know it's not monsters. I know it's just rambling. It's just I'm just being amazed how good that looks, and that leads us to the next issue. So yeah, uh, and then we see some some you know, preview pages of the next issue. That looks so. Oh man, this is a visual feast. It's been a long time that I've been, you know, exposed to a comic that is, looks so freaking good. So these are the um, the people that worked on the comic: Richard Bennett, Aaron Wiesenfield, uh, Monica Bennett, Mike Heisler. Uh, etc etc et uh, Wildstorm FX uh, so but if the story if the story is the story good well it's hard to tell because it's just you know one story uh, but I like you know the loser you know Hunter being by the police and at the same time you know dying of, of well a horrible disease and then we have these bad guys are you know discovering a, some kind of a techno virus if you will and then transforming in some people into uh, you know Stuff, stuff of nightmares that looks like this. Uh, incredible, just incredible. So I hope it pays off because it's only three issues. I got all three of them uh, lying here around so is, uh, issue number one. Look at this. Holy shit. So uh, guys, let me know what you think about this. Are you interested in this mecha 
uh, comics or not. I mean, I love science fiction. I really, really love it. Um, yeah, give me your thoughts in the, in the comments below. Leave a like and subscribe to my channel and all that jazz. See you next time. Bye-bye.